Hi guys, it's Tal from Shine Bright Design and today you are watching this video because you want to know how to colour skin. So I've split this up into two videos. One is how to colour light skin and how to colour dark skin. But I'm going to show you visually what you will be colouring today. For the light skin, we are going to colour something like this, which is really peachy and a little bit warm. This one is more pale. This one has the blue and purple tones running through it. Whereas this one is more, it's more pink. Uh, it's more yellow toned and it has a lot of that purple for the shadow. The next one you're going to learn is this one, which is really pale, but it's got green undertones in the skin. And this is typically someone who has very fair, milky skin, but when they have a lot of green undertones, their veins are very green-blue, so this is a typical skin tone of it as well. And this is very peachy, very pink. So this is one of my warmer of the sets. It's my pinkier of the set that I've done. And these are just some of the, like color tones that I do generally when I color and they're really different to what you see online at the moment so guys I know I've done these in Prismacolor but check out my color wheel substitution um, wheel because that converts any pencil brand to another brand so don't worry if you're following this tutorial and you think I don't have those pencils I can't color the same skin tone well that's fine, just substitute the pencils that I have used in this tutorial um, for something in another brand. And just check out my video on my YouTube channel, it may be of use, and check it out on Etsy. I've uh, had great reviews on it and people find it really handy. So guys, don't think that just because you're following the tutorial in one brand specific doesn't mean that you cannot learn from it because you can. And if you can't afford the pencils that people are using to do tutorials, you can still follow their tutorials with my will. And we shouldn't be we shouldn't be held back because we don't have a brand of pencil. You know, the techniques are there. You just can slightly change things a little and substitute it for a close enough color and you can still learn to be a great artist. So the other part of this is my dark skin. So this is my one of the darkest of the skins that I've coloured. This one has really blue undertones and really um, cool highlights as well. This one is more of my ready red brown type of skin tone and it has a lot of purple undertones with a bit of warmth as well. This one is a very purple uh, dark skin tone and this is like a very purple but also mauve lilac type of highlight it's very interesting and this one is my very tanned very tanned golden glowed skin okay so sometimes you guys may look at this and think how it's it's just a ball of skin color how is that supposed to work well you just have to look at faces, right? Check out my face. If you're going to color something, you look at the structure of the face. If it's flat, that's fine. Just use your imagination. If there is structure in the face, you've got to think about the hollows of your cheek. So you have shadows here. A lot of the undertones go here. You look at the highlights of the face. So here, where there are your cheekbones hit the light and you can see the, the lightness of the skin here. These are where your highlight colors. And then everywhere else is like in between. So between the shadows here, so see that darkness I have here, but also see that highlight color and that shadow here. See these areas? These are, these are the medium colors. So when you're thinking about anatomy and skin, think about dividing your skin tones or your face structures into three areas. One is the the shadows or the undertones, right? The other is the medium area, which is mainly your transition area. 
and then your highlights. So the transition area is the colors that help you go from the dark to the highlight color. And then you also gotta think about the shadows. Sometimes shadows aren't just black, you know? We don't use just black to create shadows. Sometimes we can create color to create an undertone, okay? So for example, if you look at my skin, I am very, I have a very warm complexion, but if you look at this lighting at the moment, you can see a bit of a blue light in my skin. And like, what I mean is that, yes, I can teach you how to color skin, but you also have to consider the environment that you are building this portrait around. If the environment has lights reflecting on them, you have to reflect the light in an appropriate way. So you have to use your imagination. So for example, for this one, this one I have a really yellow, yellow highlight. And so typically, if you're looking at the background or the environment the character in, it's very warm, it's very vibrant, it's very sunny. Okay, where this one, this one is not bright, not yellow, but it's almost like it's a, I would say it's either like a sunset -y dust type of day. So it's not very bright in the day. And, but the, the only reason I bring this up is because highlight colors reflect the environment so the light that's you know that's being reflected from the environment onto our skin and so on and so forth okay so guys i hope you enjoy this video comment below if you have any comments or questions and if you have any requests i only did four of each um each skin tone and sometimes i when i do skin i always wing it I always just follow my instinct and flow and having a set palette and following a tutorial helps you build your skills so that one day you don't even need to follow a color palette. You can just wing it and figure it out on your own. So I hope this is really good for people who are beginners and that you can gain something from this tutorial. Hi guys, it's Tao from Shine Bright Design and today we are doing a tutorial based on skin and this is going to be my tutorial on how to color um, colored skin so I might do a light colored one but this this tutorial will focus dark colored skin because I'm hearing a lot of my viewers tell me they need um, some help with dark colored skin and how to choose colors um, so we're going to do various uh, tones. So the one I'm going to do now has it has more of a purple purple underlying color with a lavender highlight and a kind of neutral pink base with the browns and stuff. This one uh, I haven't decided if it's going to be dark it is going to be brown like brown color skin with a bit of purple tint to it and the way I do skins works in three phases I look at the um, the highlight the medium colors and the underlying undertones so these undertones will be purple based and the highlights will be more of a pink um, pink peach light light peach type of tone with the browns on top so let's get started so I always like to start off with my un my underlying colors my my what I like to call them undertones of skin and I'm going to choose purple so I'm using Palmer violet this is 1008 I'm going to zoom in just to make things a lot easier Going in with a light pressure, I'm just building some layers down here. And I'm working in small strokes, in small circular motions. And as you bring that 
you're going to bring it into a more of a crescent moon type of shape. I'm going to feather it out so we don't have a harsh line. So you're going to lift your pressure up slightly. And that's why I recommend working in small strokes. Always rotate your pencil as well so you're working on a sharp tip. And this will also extend the lead of your pencil and prevent it from snapping and cracking with the pressure. I'm just slowly building it up that layer. with a grade lavender which is the 1026 you want to go over that purple that we just laid down we're going to soften that out with this color So there are a couple of things to consider when doing skin. One is the light source, the tone of the light source, whether it's a cool tone light or a warm tone light, and colors that may be reflecting onto the skin. Um, considerations for like the environment that you're coloring in and the, um, the other elements that may complement the skin around. For example, if you have a, a floral background or if it's a sunset background or it's a um, you know something like a cloudy stormy day the colors really uh, of those environments impact the tones on the skin so you have to consider that as well or else the skin just looks like it's kind of out of place like the the tones of the skin is out of place so when you're choosing skin colors you have to really consider the other elements that you have sitting around your art piece um, and how they will complement and kind of unify your piece as a whole so now we're going to go in with the middle color and this is our chocolate which is 1082 I want to bring it a bit back from the purple because I still want that purple to be present so I'm going to pull, push it like set it around one or two millimeters from the edge I'm working in a light hand and small strokes it's really important to work in a light hand because you're building up on these layers and when you press too hard or burnish it can um, it can impact how much color you can put in later so that's why you work in small thin layers and you build up the colors and the tones. So you see that that dark that brown tone that we got coming through, but you still see that purple undertone and as you build that layer of the brown skin, um, those purple undertones will show through.
and if you guys aren't familiar with my channel I have Breezy sitting in the background and he is sleeping and snoring his way so do not mind the little snores he's a cute little dog I wouldn't say little but um, do not worry so this is where we start to build that kind of shape and dimension in the sphere and when you you can slowly see that brown coming through but you can still see those uh, purple undertones and as we work in our layers we can kind of decide whether we need to go back and build up on those undertones if you don't think they're prominent enough And I'll do uh, probably four videos on four different types of dark skin tones that I can um, give colors for and uh, explanation um, for my viewers. And like fair skin, there are many many shades of skin color as you can tell by the various tones on and shades of foundations um, there will be various tones of skin color and there is no one type of dark tone or skin color that you would only need when doing art it really is about considerations of the things in your art piece and what type of skin tone you would you would want to complement that um, and like dark skin can be it can be so in so interesting to color because there is so much it's so um, how do I say it's so there's a, there's like an undertone of color and it comes through much like pale skin each person has undertones whether it be a blue or green or red undertones and they show up and you have to consider that when doing your uh, dark skin coloring that these undertones will come through and you should color the undercolors in them. Colouring skin is really a game of patience and it's very much a push and pull type of approach. You have to build up your layers, shade them and then assess it whether colours aren't prominent enough and you go back in, add more colours, build up more layers and that's really much it. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos where people just straight out color very hard to create portraits and I just think there's this art is such a game of patience you know a game of um, it's very strategic as well you know there's a kind of a a build a build up of love and devotion to your craft because you're building up those layers you are assessing them and you're you know adding more where it's needed it's a labor of love that is the word i'm trying to find a labor of love coloring is a labor of love and you know be patient take your time and trust your instincts go with the flow and don't feel a sense of pressure to perfect things just follow your instinctive, you know, your instinctive um, guides when it comes to art and just go with it. Let your 
can take you where you want to go. Okay? So, that's the base of the chocolate. And you can see that shadow of the underline and those purple tones coming through. I want to make them more prominent. So I'm going back in with 1008 and building up that color. Like beige sienna we're going to run this color at the top here this color is almost used to kind of help transition between your chocolate and your shadow colors And I'm working in small circular motions, as you can see. And this color is really helping transition from that chocolate color and building up that depth. I'm going to add in another color. This is Black Raspberry 1095. This is a dark purple um, color and it's really going to help build up those shadows too. So we're going to put this on top of that Parma Violet and it's going to help really blend between that purple and that chocolate color and really give this more dimension. So when you look at face structures, you need to consider things like highlight points, at the tip of the nose, the bridge of the nose, the cheekbones. These are the things that are going to be the light, the highlights, shadows, the sunkenness under the eyes, the the sunk the sunkenness of the jaws and the cheekbones. So that you know when you suck your suck your um, your mouth in. That is going to be dark as well to give you that um, that chiseled face look, that sculpted look. That's where you have to consider where your undertones and your shadows and your highlight points are. So really understand the anatomy of the face and skin. So you can see that raspberry, um, that black raspberry had a lot of the red tones as well. And it kind of like, you can still see the purples here. Now we're going to go back in with that chocolate because we want to bring back that warm tone, kind of push back that red. So guys, this is all done in the Prismacolor pencils, but if you want to use a different uh, brand of pencils, check out my, um, my pencil substitution converter wheel, which is on my channel, and it's also on my uh, Etsy store uh, 
as well for a digital download, potentially with a physical download later on. But my will allows you to um, to convert any pencil brand into one other brand. So check it out. If you don't have a, a, um, the Prismacolors, don't worry. Check out my converter wheel, and then it will help out. Um, it will help you substitute those pencils. So don't worry. Um, but if you want, select similar colors to what I'm what I'm using now, and you will get a similar effect. Sometimes it's not always about brands. Um, like some yes, quality is important and high and light fast ratings and stuff like that. But if you can't afford it, you can still create beautiful work with any other pencil brand. And so you can see that chocolate being built upon what we place down is really bringing everything together and as those layers build up and increase you'll see it all come together and so like as I said coloring is a labor of love especially skin skin can be very very daunting coloring portraits can be very stressful but it shouldn't have to be And as you guys know, nothing is perfect. Art isn't perfect, so don't try to perfect it. Um, just create it, follow your artistic flow, and grow with it. You know, you learn something every time you create a new piece. Now I'm going to bring in my highlight points. Now the highlight points I'm using is around here. And this color is the 927, which is like a light peach. Now unlike fair skin, um, and in this instance, this the lighting for this skin isn't like a white light and so there's a warm light to it and that's why I'm using something like a light, like a light peach so I'm building this up in my highlight point like so
Now as you can see, that color has made things really lighten up. We don't want that, but I'm building this up so that I have a highlight point. And so I can create some, I guess, guidelines in terms of the lighting points of where they are sitting. I want to go back in some dark colors so you don't have to worry. We're going to go back in with that chocolate because we still want to build up that brown color. So let's build up that tone. I'm going to go in with a seashell pink, which is the 1093. Now this is a very neutral um, skin tone color, which is going to be placed at the highlight point. And as you can see, our layers are building up to a point that it's starting to um, smooth out and all those grains are filling up. So this is why we work in thin layers because we don't want to really finish things off so quickly. We want to be able to have that flexibility to work and build up our color. Now because I don't think that this is dark enough, I want to go back with that chocolate again, which is the 1082. Now I'm going to bring this chocolate color into those highlight points, but I'm going to lift up my pressure. Now I want to go back with something more purple tone, so I'm going in with 1026. This grey lavender will tone down this yellow that's coming through. And you can use light colours to really knock things down a bit. Now I want to go in with a darker brown, I'm going in with sepia, which is 948. This is a dark brown and this is where we're going to add in that intense brown colour.
Now we want to go in with that Palmer Violet again, which is a 1008. We're going to use this on the shadow area and this is just going to make the the shadows and the contours of the face just look more interesting. You want to go back in with that chocolate? Now you can consider the chocolate as almost your base brown. And then you want to go in with the clay rose, which is the And then back in with your sepia, which is the 948.
Now I'm going to go in with that seashell, uh, the seashell pink, which is the 1093. I'm going to run it here at the edges. in with that clay rose which is the 1012 run at the highlight points like so Bring it here on top of that seashell pink and blending that color out. And then bringing that also into the palm of violet. So you got it like almost like a good transition. Now you want to go back in with your sepia, which is a 948. In with the 
Now I want to go in with the black raspberry, which is a 1095. And then back in with the sepia, which is the 948.
Going in with 1080, this is beige sienna. We're just going to go over everything, just making sure that we filled in all the grains. Okay, so this is my one of my first colors for dark skin. It's got that warm, warm uh, highlight with a dark purple shadow. And I guess the more the more you bring in that dark purple and you blend it out, it just transitions much nicer. Okay, so I'll move on to so my we're next tone of color. Second option. Now, this is a similar tone as well, but it's a lot darker. And it has more of a red in it. So, what you want to do is start off with your undercolors. So, here I'm going with 956. This is more of a pinky purple tone.
I'm working in small circular motions in small strokes and I'm working really lightly and this will help me blend things out, feather it out and just soften that transition of the colour. Now I like to use colour as undertone because it allows, it gives you something different when it comes to shading. Um, you're using colour to create uh, shadows and tones in skin. Whereas if you use black, it's not as interesting or, um, you know, it doesn't give you that sense of excitement. That's why I like to use colour in my skin a lot. Not just a no normal flat skin tones. I always love to like introduce something a bit interesting, a different tone of colour, whether it may be blues, pinks, reds, and sometimes even greens. And a green tone really depends on the type of skin colour. So pale skin has more of a green, blue tone and pink, whereas purples have, um, where darker skin has um, warmer tones, purple tones, um, and red tones, sometimes blue as well. But that really all depends on the environment you're in and the lighting that you have. Now going in with Rosy Beige, which is 1019. Again, I'm adding in this pink tone so that when we bring in the, the browns and the more red tone browns, it will be transitioned. It kind of um, helps you transition into those colors more naturally rather than going from purple straight to brown. So cons mixing colors is, um, is good because you're gonna layer different varieties of these skin tones and it's gonna give it more dimension. And I know a lot of people don't use um, different colors with their skin tones, they just stick to uh, just skin tone pencils, but I think so interesting and you should definitely give it a try. So as you can see, I'm building more of this color here and here because my highlight points will be in the center and then the lighting behind the orb. But you still want this color placed down throughout the whole thing, but you want more layers of this one color here and here. So when you're doing skin, you still want to place the one colour over the base because it's a lighter colour. But you want more layers in the shadow points. Now I'm making sure my pressure is really light and remembering to rotate my pencil.
which is very important to keep that point sharp. By no means do I think I'm a professional artist, but I have done some creative studies, my degree and my work and everything, to understand colour. Going in with Nectar, which is 1092. This is more of a pink tone. this color we're just going to keep on the shadow points. And slightly here just to give it some dimension and shape. Now I'm not going to the edge on the right because I still want a light source to come from behind the orb. I'm not bringing this colour into the centres and the highlight points, just where they're shadow. And this is just going to help transition. This is where we go in with our Sienna Brown. This is 945. Placing this on your shadow points. Here you want to go right to the edge. So because up here, I kind of have left a light source behind, you want to also feather that out. You don't want it to be a harsh line. So remember to soften that out. But towards the right, you want to make sure you do touch the lines.
I'm building up my layers now and the intensity of the brown will increase. But you can still see that beautiful purple showing through. And that's the great thing about using underpainting, using colour to create intrigue. So guys, if you are new to this channel, I would love it if you could just subscribe to my channel, turn on that notification bell, and make sure you don't miss out on any of every of my contents that get released weekly. Another way to support me is to check out my Etsy store. I have colouring pages and some interesting uh, colouring tools that will be useful to you whether you use high quality brands or low quality brands, check it out and check out my video, my substitution wheel on my channel. Now, we want to slightly bring this color into the light zones because I don't want it to be straight white. I want to be able to mix things on it. But as you are doing that, you have to also create level, layers, additional layers in your shadow zones. And also make it sure that it is all blended nicely and smoothly. Now, if you're not good with blending, you can also use um, solvents and other blending, uh, tech, blending tools like pencils and... Um, Gamsol, baby oil, Vaseline. Check out my blend, blenders and solvents video, which is um, probably my one of my most popular videos on my channel. That's really useful. Now I want to bring in some light peach, which is 927. We're going to bring this into the center. And this is just almost creating a neutral base that runs across the whole sphere. So there is no shading in the sense that you're just doing a flat layer. You're not building up layers. And this color will help kind of unify all these colors together. Now remember to also bring this color to your highlight points, which is on the right of this orb. Now I want to go in with a dark color now. This is Dark Umber 947. Same approach, you want to start off in your darkest shadow zones because we're going to be building up most of the color through here and building up more layers through here than anywhere else. So you want to start off here and slowly transition so they move towards the highlight points. 
keeping everything really lightly because the point here is to build up layers and not to get too um, excited and go too harsh because it's always better to build up rather than um, go straight into it and push too hard because it's really hard to go backwards. So keep all your layers really lightly and be patient. Colouring to me is a act of patience and love and in the end I'm sure you'll be proud of it. And if you're not, it's all a learning curve. So remember to work in small strokes and this will help you with your blending as well. I think colouring skin can be very daunting and very intimidating and so a lot of popular colouring books are ones that do not include any skin or facial um, characters or compositions. I think people should um, give it a try, check it out and don't, don't be scared, just have a go, build your confidence up slowly. So yes, we are going to bring this into the highlight zones, but we're going to lift up our pressure, keeping our strokes really small. Softening the edge here on the right. Now let's go back to the left and build up those layers. Now if you like my content, please share it with people that you know because I had a, I stopped doing content for a couple of years and a lot of people thought I disappeared from YouTube and I want everyone to know that I'm back. It's really hard with a new YouTube algorithm to tell your old followers who followed you or followers who just watched your videos but didn't subscribe that you know, you're back making content. Uh, content so share the word guys if you like what I'm um, my content it would be mean so much to me if you just you know shared my content shared my videos shared my Instagram and just 
you know, promoted it. It's I'm trying my best to get the word out there that I'm making content and I'm back and just telling people that check out my content, try it out. I hope anyone I hope that people can benefit from my channel and the stuff so that I hope I that online. people can come to my channel, learn something new and apply it to their own colouring. To now pull it down with some grey. This is putty beige, which is 1083. You want to run this down in the highlight zones. My hope is this grey, because it's some sort of, some type of cool tone, it will neutralize and tone down this fear. So you're going to do an even base layer across the whole sphere. Even in these highlight points. Back in with a new color which is 997 this is beige running this on the highlight points Now you want to go in with your dark colour again, which is the dark umber, the 947.
Here your pressure is probably medium.
back in with beige, which is 997. This is a very neutral colour. And we're starting from the highlight points and bringing our way outwards. Now this is where we make our way outwards now, towards those darker zones, but we're not pressing as hard, we're just slowly building up that, that, that shadow layer, the transition between the light and the dark. So still keep everything light and feather it towards the dark areas, because it's going to be a lot of push and pull. Okay, back in with your dark umber, which is a 947. Now this is where we bring in our rosy beige, which is the 1019. We're going to use this colour between the dark umber and that beige colour to kind of transition it between.
back in with your dark umber which is a 947 So that is Breezy, my staffy, who likes to sit in the room while I work. So don't mind his noises, it's just my dog. There we go. Now this is my other, um, I have two more tones of dark skin that I'd like to showcase. And this is more of a warm brown um, uh, skin tone with a bit of blue shadow. And hopefully you like it. So, starting off with underpainting. 1007. Yes, this is going to be an interesting color. This is Violet Imperial or Imperial Violet. Just to be able The next color you want to go in with is light umber, which is 941.
going in with Mineral Orange, which is 1033. In with 1034, this is Goldenrod. You want to go in now with 1032, this is pumpkin orange. We're going to place this at the shadows. So this is a darker olive tone, this is um, warmer, it's more yellow, it's got more yellow golden undertone. So guys, if you want me to do a light skin tone, um, how to colour light skin tone, comment below and I'll do one that is fairer skin or milky coloured. We're going to go in with a peach which is 939 and this is like our 
middle color, our transition color between the highlight point and the darker points. I like to do use peach a lot when I'm doing this type of skin tone and it's really a good color to kind of help that transition between the uh, creamy yellow sun-kissed look and the dark kind of warm red brown look so it's a good color that kind of is that transition I'm going in with cream which is 914 and this is going to be used at our highlight points. Because of the warmth in it, the yellow toned, it's excellent for highlights. And because we've also used goldenrod in this skin tone, it's an excellent transition between those colours as well. It harmonizes very well. So I'm placing this only in the highlight zone. We'll use other colors to help it transition to between the browns. And we're also going to place this color to the right. Now we're going to go back in with that light umber which is a 941 and then we're going to make sure that we touch these shadows, the shadow part right to the edge here to the left, go in with the medium pressure and bring it in.
So now we're going in with a 943 and this is going to really bring in and bring it all together, give it that brown red feel. Now we're just focusing on blending things out to the highlight points and building up those layers slowly. Now you want to go in with goldenrod Now I would say my pressure is medium Going in with a eggshell, which is one four zero. Going in at my highlight point. This is less, uh, less yellow, but it's still creamy. I'm going in with a medium pressure and as I'm working towards the browns I'm kind of lifting that pressure off and blending it there and then we're going to go back in with a brown or a peach and kind of trend, kind of blend that all together Going in with the peach, which is the 939. Here we're going to go in between that brown and the cream and eggshell color and transition it with this.
Okay, so this is the last color tone that we're doing today. And this is more of a dark skin with a blue undertone and neutral colors. This is probably going to be my most challenging um, because I want to do it justice. So, some interesting colors. We are going to go with Periwinkle, which is 1025. We're starting off with light pressure. Remember to rotate your pencil to ensure that it's sharp.
And as I'm getting towards the highlight point, I'm lifting up my pressure a bit. I'm going to soften out this right side and I'm going to deepen the left side. All right, now we're going to go in with 936. This is slate grey. I love this colour. This is one of my favourite colours. If you're a fan of Payne's Grey, the watercolour, this is an excellent colour. It's just that blue-grey look. It's neutral not too bright. I love using this colour as an undertone. Now we're going to go in with a light grey and this is 50% cool grey which is 1063. I'm using this as a middle tone. And the reason why I'm choosing this colour tone is because I believe darker skin doesn't always have to be warm. There can be cool toned dark skins. 
and this skin tone I'm hoping will turn out to be really beautiful. soften it out here and I'm going to bring this and soften it out to the highlight point. I'm going to go now in with the dark brown. This is 946. Now you want to bring this color in a bit early, not too late in the piece because you don't want to build up your colors, fill up all your layers and minimize how much of that brown we can bring in. So I like to bring it in maybe halfway through after I do all the undertones and then I go back and forth.
Okay, so now the next color you want to go in with is the dark gray. This is espresso, which is 1099. This is not black, but not gray. So it's kind of a between. It's more like, yes, it's a dark coffee color. The next color you want to go in with is peach beige, which is 1085. You want to run this at the center, just lightly. Because this is more yellow toned, we don't, we only want this as a base, just to kind of bring it all together. you want to go in with is a grey green light which is 292289 um, and then you just want to run this at the highlight point and push back that previous color also you want to run this on the highlights to the right Now we want to go in with your 70% cool grain, which is 1065. This is my middle color, and I'm keeping it really light. Now we're going to go in with sand, Sandbar Brown, which is 1094. Going over that 7% cool grey. And over the highlight point as well. This is my middle brown color.
bring this also to the right. going to go in with a slate grey which is the 936 And then in with our dark brown, which is a 946. This is where we add more of the brown colour into this and build up our layers.
So we're just building up those layers, blending it all together. I'm going in with a sandbar brown which is 1094. And I'm just going to blend everything out and help with that transition with this color. I'm going in with dark brown which is 946 So guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed that tutorial. Like and subscribe and please press that bell button and do not miss out on my weekly content releases. You can contact me via Instagram if you like, if you follow any of my tutorials and tag me. I love showing your color pieces on my, on my Instagram channels to say anyone can follow my tutorials, anyone can learn to be an amazing artist because you can. You all can be amazing and you all have the potential to be great. So. 
It's me from Shine Bright Design. I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for inviting me into your homes and, you know, colouring with me. Be you, be true and shine bright. Bye.